to the case of disgraced tennis legend Bob Hewitt. Last week, his request to appeal a six-year prison sentence was rejected in South Africa, where he was convicted of raping two girls, sexually assaulting another more than 20 years ago. A panel of judges declared, quote, he showed no remorse for his vile deeds. Here in the States, Hewitt's past gained attention five years ago thanks to the courage of a local woman who came forward to share her story of abuse when she was a tennis prodigy decades before. The Boston Globe then launched its own investigation and found numerous other abuse allegations against Hewitt in one case involving a child who was just 10 years old at the time. The woman who first spoke out to startle us, Heather Crow Connor, joins me now. Heather, I'm really glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Can we start at the end and then work backwards? When you sure. heard that this guy's <laughs> appeal was rejected, he's going to jail for six years, which is just a month or two after he's the first person permanently thrown out of the International Tennis Hall of Fame. I'm going to use a word I hate because I can't <laughs> think of another one. Does that bring you any closure? What does that do for you? Um, no. Doesn't Why? bring me any Why? closure. <laughs> Why? I would say because I, I feel very distant and removed from their legal proceedings over there and you mean literally because it's so far well, away. Well I do and because I feel like I, it was just very different for me. It, their situation seemed to be like one time and and one time for something somebody else and mine was kind of a lengthy long time sort of a relationship obviously uh, poor. But first sexually late. assaulting you when you were 15 years old. Right. Many, many occasions. So there's more than that. And I feel like he would have gotten a life sentence here. So for me to hear he got six and fine, it just, it really, it didn't mean anything to me. Would anything short of, uh, first of all, the statute of limitations <laughs> is passed on mm. criminal charges. You want a civil suit against him, I know, yes. but you don't know if you're ever going to collect anything. Right. Would anything short of a criminal conviction here where you got to testify, give you the level of satisfaction that you feel you need or deserve um, or no? Actually, I, I don't think I'll ever get any satisfaction if you want to put it like in those terms because the reason I came forward was more of a I have just have to like kind of bring him down a notch. I felt he's in the Hall of Fame. He's thought of as one of the greatest players and I'm just, I just got, I can't stand this anymore and I never ever had a thought of of like revenge or, and I still am working through, it was like a, a Stockholm syndrome thing. I was kind of always worried and I thought, oh, I don't wish him ill will, but I Why? want him. Why don't you feel revenge? You said, I, I read don't. you say somewhere, I, he hijacked my life. Yes, what? I do feel, and I've always felt, even though I never talked about it, that I even felt like he ruined me and I was done and so I've even made comments like to get married and have children that was like that's the greatest thing that I could have ever had happen because I like to say hey it didn't actually completely destroy me and ruin me I can have a you know a husband and lovely girls and kind of still be normal even though I don't feel normal so do you <laughs> not feel that you want revenge because you think it would do more harm to you or you're no. a better person? I mean, well, I don't, I don't want to say I'm any better person. But I, don't, I don't get it. Why would you, someone who abused you for more than a decade, starting when you were a young teen. He groomed me in a way that he appeared to be, I viewed it as he was being kind, even though he was hurting me. And the stuff in the paper about that he wasn't ever violent or whatever, that just, that really upsets me because what in that word of rape does not mean that there must be some sort of violence, even if there's no gun or knife. He raped knife. a child. He was in his right. mid-30s, and he raped a 10-year-old, yeah. and you right. as a 15-year-old. Yeah, but many, I mean, more than once, twice, three times, many, many times. But I, I don't mean to belabor this, so yeah. my apologies, but I still don't understand. Why are you not vindictive? I... I just, I, I mean, I, it's, hard to, it's hard to describe. I mean, I work with some people who are helping me. I have a fabulous like, little treatment team. And they, it's, it's, I think it's because it was, I felt like he was somewhat being kind. And like he said, oh, I hope I'm not hurting you, although he was. And it just, through the years, it seemed like I didn't want to hurt him, per se. And I, I just wanted people to know what he did to me. And that's always been... And it still is really my motive that he, what he did to me, and I want him to know what he did. None of this would have happened. No uh, uh, disbarment from the Tennis Hall of Fame, no criminal conviction were you not to have come forward. Did it make you feel any better when you first found out that you were not alone, that you were not the only no. one? No. Why? And I was 
shocked, honestly, and yet many, many people kept saying, oh, there's got to be others in it. But I was convinced that I was special. I was the only one. He cared so much about me. So this process of trying to recover in the past few years is it's kind of been brutal because it's contradicting what I lived my whole life thinking that I was the one special person that he groomed, even though it was cruel. So to confront that I wasn't special, I mean, it just feels like, you know, betrayal and all that sort of stuff. Do you think, I know this is projection because yeah. just this <laughs> appeal was just turned down about a week ago. Mm -hmm. Do you think, it, do you have an ability or desire now that he is behind, will be behind bars, probably die behind bars. If his, does that allow you to get at least a piece of this out of your head, or does it? Do you? Does this never no, I, go away? I would like to think it would, but I think because it was such a lifelong, and I kept it secret for so long, it kept alive for so long that I, I can't. It's really kind of who I am. It's the effect that it had on me has shaped me into a lot of different things, so I can't... I'm going to try one more time. All right. <laughs> Does it not give you satisfaction, because it should, that were it not for you, he'd be driving around in his BMW in South Africa, doing whatever he did, and that justice would not have been done to a whole <laughs> group of young women now... Okay, you know, I'm, I do have satisfaction that... Also, that maybe I guess I helped these people. I've never met them, but I you know that they were very thankful when uh, Bob Holler went over there, and they had a Global place reporter. to a place to express what happened to them. So I'm I'm very thankful for that. Can I tell you one? It's none of this would happen without you, and two, you're a really courageous soul. Thank you. Heather, it's Appreciate a pleasure it. to meet you. Thank you.